In this video, guys, we're going to show you how to do a water test on your flat roof so that you can isolate an area and determine whether or not the roof is leaking. Stick around and we'll show you how it's done. What's up guys, my name's Aaron. We're here in our shop, Exterior Pro. And in this third video of our series on finding and fixing leaks on HVAC units, we're gonna discuss a water test. How to do a water test, how we do them, how it proves that the roof is not leaking. We're gonna show you an easy and quick way, what I think is an easy and quick way to do it. And kind of a safe way in case you, you would get a leak, we're gonna show you kind of an exit strategy for the water. What would you do if you water tested and you failed the water test? So that's what we're gonna show you. Why might you need to do a water test? Well. You might need to do a water test in the instant that you get into either a discussion, an argument, a disagreement with an HVAC installer or the HVAC manufacturer, maybe a GC, where someone is claiming that the roof that you put on is leaking and you are claiming that the roof you put on is not leaking. You've tested your seams, you've checked for holes, it's good to go, you had the roof inspected, or maybe it's been on for several years and all of a sudden it starts leaking, but there's no holes. What do you do? One of the ways that you can prove to people that the roof is not leaking is to do a water test. Now, it's a thing that I don't think I would just jump to. I think I would review the video two in this series and I think I would walk through all of the other steps because I think they're less time consuming than a water test. However, this water test is pretty conclusive. What we're gonna show you how to do is fill up an area, isolate an area, fill it up with water and just test it. You're just gonna sit there and wait and we're gonna see if the roof leaks. All right guys, so I just re recently came out of a job where the, the units were brand new. There was a large amount of water coming into the building every time it rained. Even a light rain would put a large amount of water. We had been up multiple times at this job. The roof was not leaking. I've had it inspected. I had it re-inspected, but no one would take my word for it that it wasn't the roof. We needed to be looking on the unit and not the manufacturer of the, of the unit. They kept saying, no, it's the roofer, it's the roofer, it's the roofer. So I said, okay, I'll go up and do a water test. So how did I do my water test? Well, what I did was I took a two by four and I, this, this is how I did. I took, I took two two by fours, I screwed them together and then I just simply took a piece of our membrane. That particular roof happened to be PVC. I shot membrane down to this. We did this in our shop with 10 foot two by fours. Now you could make a two by six depending on how much water that you wanted to box into this area. Now what I did then was we went to this job, we took a, uh, the hatch, opened it up, and we shucked these boards up, passed them up, and we set them up in a frame. So we did a 20 by 20 area, which was two sets of our rails. Again, we built this here in our shop, stuck them in the truck, went out to the job. So when we got there, we laid these down on the roof, and we just simply took our welder and we welded these down to the roof in a square around the unit that we wanted to test. And then what we did was we simply took a water hose and filled that up. How do we know that our welds were tight? We didn't lose any water, right? So what we did then was we waited. We filled this thing up and it was right at four hours. So this happened to be a restaurant. We filled this, we filled this area, 20 by 20 area up with water and then we went down and had dinner. We sat at the table where the leaks were right underneath this thing so that we would be the first ones to know if it failed this test. However, after dinner, eat a big fat steak, you have some cheesecake afterwards, drink some coffee, sit there, no leaks. When the restaurant closes, we go up, we, 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 we see what we got. Well, we got no leaks. The roof held water, including all the flashings on the gas lines, everything around it for four hours. All right, it's right at closing time, it's 11 o'clock. This is sat for about three and a half hours. So no leaks inside, no leaks out here, not losing any water. The roof is completely watertight. So way back here behind the curb. This whole thing's laying in ponding water. Way back into here. Way back behind the curb. Definitely not the roof leaking. Water test proves that like without a doubt. It's safe to say that it's not the roof. Why? That roof just held water for four hours, right? So it's a pretty conclusive thing. However, it just takes time. You gotta buy the two before. You gotta put them together. You gotta wait for it to fill up. You know, it takes some time and effort, so it's not my first go-to. I don't just whip out a water test for no reason. It's, it's kind of a, what I would do is a last resort, just to say, listen guys, let's just test it. If she starts leaking, it's on me. If she doesn't leak, it's on you. Is that a fair deal? That's a fair deal. Now, in this particular case, they didn't even take my water test for an answer. They, they said, no, it's still the roof. And you know, at that point, you've got to prove, you've got to pinpoint them. But the water test, to me, 
proved conclusively and to a bunch of other folks that were involved in this situation that it's just not the roof. You can't sit for four inch to five inches of water on a roof for four hours and, it, and, and if there's any kind of hole, any loose seams, anything going on, it's going to start leaking, right? It's just sitting in water. So the water test is a great way. Now, I'm going to give you a couple tips on what we did on this water test. I didn't try to do the whole roof. The whole roof couldn't be done. It's ridiculous. It had a quarter inch fall, right? The roof was about 90 by 90, right? On this big sit down restaurant. If, if I tried to plug the drains at the bottom and fill the whole roof up, I'd be 20 or 30 inches. You know, you do the math. If you're 90 feet at a quarter inch per foot, you're going to be 18 to 20 inches of what you can, you'll be running water over top of your curb. So you've got to isolate an area. That's why we did this. Secondly, I only isolated a 20 by 20 square around the unit in question because I don't want to overweight the roof. How much water it, what did I put up there? I don't know, it was a lot. Kind of made me nervous, right? And then the next thing that I would say is, don't overload the roof, pick out, a, pick out a section to do so you can isolate it, but then you better have checked your seams, dude. Like your welds better be tight. There better not be a hole in there because you put all that water on there, right? It's gonna leak, right? You, you could get yourself into big trouble. I was nervous that whole dinner, not because I'm a bad roofer. I was just nervous in general. I thought, man, what if I missed even a pinhole? I'm up there with four and five stomping around in water up on there. I thought, man, hey man, I, I'm, ho I, hey, I'm hoping I'm as good as I think I am, baby, right? You've got to check your work before you do this, fellas, just, just as a tip. And then my last tip, when we did this water test, what we did was on the downhill side, instead of just making a square box, what I did was, I V'd the bottom, right? So I said, okay, okay, what happens if I am wrong and I've made a mistake and the, and the HVAC company's right, right? And it's on me and it's on the, and this roof starts just pouring water out. What am I gonna do? I wanted to have a, a strategy to get rid of this water fast because if it starts coming in the building, right? I gotta get it off, I gotta, get, I gotta get this test over with and get the water down the roof and get it to the drain. So I V'd my bottom and I separated my wood nailer so that I could, and I could, but I connected my membrane and I welded it down. So that in the event that I was wrong and they were right and I did have a leak, right? My roof was bad and it starts leaking. I could take my scissors and just cut down that flap and just dump the water out of it. It was, it was my evacuation strategy. So those would be my tips when you're doing these things, right? Don't do too big of an area so you don't overweight your roof. Check your work definitely before you do this so that you're pretty sure when you go to the water test phase, you better be pretty daggone sure, boys, that it ain't on you, right? Because you're going to make, you're going to look stupid. You do all this and it starts leaking. And then third, have you an evacuation for your water port? Like run those two things together or run it all to a corner. You could run the whole slope to a corner and leave a gap in your two where you could cut and drain that water fast and then fix the leaks or get the water off the leak if you did happen to find one. All right guys, last thing that I did on this particular water test and I think it was a pretty good idea. I use clip screws for like standing seam just to tack on to my top of my wood frames. So after I was done testing, the, the, this test lasted for four hours. We came up, no leaks, everything good dry. I went to my the spot where I told you I was gonna evacuate the water. I cut it, I drained the water, but I'm left with my, my, my membrane is welded now down to the deck. So what do I do? I can't unweld it. What I did was we ran a pair of scissors down the side of this parapet and just cut this off. And then, and then we took, removed all the wood and then we just laid the other side of that, of this piece of membrane down to the roof and we just went ahead and welded that side down. So what you had when you went up there now, you just had a, like, it looked like you took stripping and you just stripped in a strip here, down to the side and back up and around. We just welded down both sides. So the first side got welded down before we did the test. After the test, we just run scissors down the top, drain the water, cut the top of the membrane off and then just get our welders back out after the test and just weld the whole stripping down so that it's just not a piece of membrane, they're just flopping in the rain. That was a pretty clean and effective way. Total time, maybe an hour set up, maybe an hour to fill it full of water. So a couple hours, you wait four hours and then probably a couple hours. So, you know, you're, 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 you're some time into a water test. So before you just jump to the water test, review video two of this series, maybe you'll find that leak way before you get to the water test. I would only use or do these water tests as kind of a last resort just to say like, listen, they wouldn't let me tarp the unit, but, but, and I can't find it. I don't know what else is going on, but it has to be that. Let me just do the water test. 
please check your work before, you've got to be very confident in your work to do these kind of tests. But that's kind of the route that, that I would go. I wouldn't do the water test only as a kind of a last resort. I would look for all of the other things that we covered in video two first. Guys, happy roofing, stay safe. Video four, check it out. We're going to go into defensive roofing. Right, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a defensive roofer. I teach my guys to roof defensively. Why is that? Because I don't want leaks. I don't want to have problems. And when, it, when the leaks are on the HVAC unit, I'm not going to play defense on the roof and look for holes on a roof that ain't there. I'm going to play offense. You, you, you can't play offense right, and actually find and fix leaks if you're all the time defending against bad seams, bad welds, missing caulking, missing fasteners. That's what we're going to talk about in this fourth video. Defensive roofing, guys. We'll see you on the next one.